Okay, um, the 100 days. Okay, the 100 days are the first 100 days that FDR was in office, and they are considered the most important in him turning around the economy. Okay? Um, his inaugural inspired with the term, nothing to fear but fear itself. I want you to really think about that, and I'm going to go through the rest of this, and when we're done with this slide, I want to see if somebody can explain to me what that means. It's not as easy of a quote as it sounds, but once you understand it, it makes a lot more sense. Banking system uh, is saved from collapse. What he does is he brings in, closes all the banks, and they sift through them and decide which banks are able to make it and which ones are not able to make it. Um, Fifteen major laws provided relief. Tennessee Valley Authority was the most ambitious one. Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA, still exists today, is a great example of relief programs. Okay, there are three different things they tried to do. Three R's. Relief, reform, and recovery. Relief is giving jobs to people. Reform is trying to fix an industry for the future. Recovery is trying to help an industry fix for now. Okay? Reform and relief are the most important. Um, a good example of reform is the <coughs> FDIC that insured your money in the banks. Okay? They also created laws where banks couldn't invest in the stock market. That's reform. Relief is the Tennessee Valley Authority. Anyone know what the Tennessee Valley Authority did? Oh, I was going to ask if Glass-Steagall was the one where banks can't. That's the one. They can't. Have you read the chapter? No, no that's just outside. That, okay. before. Okay. That, that is the one. They repealed it? Like when? Hey, but, but they put a new one in effect, basically. Oh. Glass-Steagall was never really fully repealed. Oh, they, they kept part, FDIC is actually part of that. Truth and Securities Act is part of that. I thought they repealed it like when we were going into like the when we were just about starting the recession. They repealed Glass recently. You mean? Yeah. Parts of it. Parts of it. They never repealed all of it. Anyone know what the Tennessee Valley Authority is though? Okay. What it was, and it's a good example. They built hydroelectric dams in the worst hit area of the United States, which is the Tennessee River Valley, uh, in Tennessee and Kentucky. Why was that Provided, the worst? What? Why, why was that area the worst? Um. Just the makeup of the economy and the people who were there. It was hill country. There wasn't a lot of farming. It was just the jobs were all gone. So it provided thousands of jobs and power. Provided power as well. All right, the New Deal. These 15 laws that provide relief, that's the New Deal. Okay, that's the first New Deal. Um, aim to reform and restore, not nationalize the economy. What that last line means is, and FDR made the comment, I'm not, he wasn't trying to change capitalism and totally change our system into a national or socialist economy. He was trying to reform and restore our economy. Okay? And major reformation taking place. Okay, back to the nothing to fear but fear itself. What does that mean? Go for it. Well, I guess I don't... Um, well, I mean, is it the only thing that we actually... It sounds pretty simplistic, but fear is really the only obstacle we have. In which way? In what way? Why is fear such a scary thing? I hate using fear twice. So fear is really scary for us. Well, didn't you say that the, it wouldn't have been as bad if people weren't fearful? It plummeted really low because yep. of all the fear that happened? Yes. Nikki? Um, fear made them like sacrifice things like their money into the stock market because like, they're afraid of like going bankrupt and having a bunch of debts and then that put them in an even lower position. Right. So all we have to fear is fear itself. Really should be all we have to be afraid of is fear. People, all we have to be afraid of is people being scared. Because our economy thrives on us being consumers. If we're afraid <coughs> I'm going to lose my job, if we're afraid I'm not going to get that raise, what, are we going to spend money or are we going to save money? Save. We're going to save that money. So all of a sudden, if everyone's afraid, we don't spend money. And here's the conundrum. It happens then, doesn't it? What we don't want to happen, happens. Which is why I feel the media helped cause the last recession a couple years ago. It was a fall. I remember them just keep coming back and back and forth saying, we're almost going to be in a recession. Things are looking bad. It's going to get bad. Well, all of a sudden, everyone thought it was going to get bad, so people stopped spending. Thanks, media. You know what I mean? We thrive on the word they use, consumer confidence. There's even a CCI, Consumer Confidence Index. Now, I don't know how they calculate that, so don't ask, Lucas. I don't know. Look it up. But it's an important figure in our economy and how confident people are. 
Okay, and that's all we have to fear is fear itself. People were afraid. And again, they should have been a little bit. Your money was safer in your mattress or buried in your backyard than it was in a bank. I showed you that slide with how many banks had closed um, during the Depression era. What would happen if it, like, I had money in the bank and it would close today? Like, how would I get my You'd money get back? All your money back up to $100,000. Actually, I think it's $200,000 now. They had signs up at banks the last three, Is four that years. Two fifty. They said two hundred thousand up to this date, but I think they kept that two hundred thousand. So if you have like so everything over two hundred thousand, you lose. Yeah. Great Will you have more than that? No. Okay. This is well. That, that's why rich people put their money in tons of banks. They don't keep it all in one bank. Which bank? And they insure it more. Okay. This is a Tennessee Valley Authority. You can see it's way bigger than what you maybe first thought. It goes from Virginia. See Illinois, the parts of Arkansas, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, Kentucky, and North Carolina. So it's huge. It's a lot of the Appalachia it's region, which is one of the hardest areas. It doesn't go into Illinois. Okay, Roosevelt and Recovery. National Recovery Administration, the NRA, the different NRA. Industries formulated codes to eliminate cutthroat competition, ensure labor peace. Codes favored big business uh, were unenforceable. Not as best... Um, law that was passed. 1935, NRA is ruled unconstitutional. Now here is where, remember I said Hoover did too little too late. FDR did more, but people still fought that. People still were scared to let the government dive this much into business. Okay? So, it's, so the constitutionality of the New Deal programs is tested all, very often. Okay? And it's not the only one to get declared unconstitutional. Agricultural Adjustment Act like National Rifles? No, 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 no. National Recovery oh. Administration. I said not the other one. Okay. The AAA, now not the AAA, the Travel Agency, the Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933, also gets declared unconstitutional, but they fixed that one. I'll get into that. Farmers are paid to take land out of cultivation. The first time ever farmers are paid not to produce. Okay? Prices increased mainly because of government payments, but the Dust Bowl helped in cutting supply. At the same time as the Depression, farmers are hit with the nastiest drought um, in its history across the Great Plains. Okay? So many farmers lost their farms, not just because of poor prices, but the Dust Bowl killed their crops. Yep. Is that extending to Minnesota? Or Parts of it. There's a, is there a map here? So we're kind of on the old no. There's a, I have a good map in my regular book, but... Um, you know, it, it hits maybe about 30 miles west of here. This is as close as it gets anywhere in Minnesota. Basically, the Great Plains, if you know, that's maybe southwest Minnesota too. I'll have to look at that now. When we get done with notes, I'll take a break. Um, sharecroppers and tenant farmers are, are dispossessed and often at times kicked out of where they're at because the farmer they were with is no longer in business. Okay. Now, that one gets declared unconstitutional as well, but they bring it back um, with some adjustments. Rather than saying to this farmer, we are going to pay you not to produce on this land, which sounds crazy, to pay somebody not to do something. Okay? Instead, they call it CRP. What does CRP stand for? Conservation. No. Conservation Reserve Program. So now they said, we're going to pay you to conserve that piece of land, when really they're still paying them not to produce. Okay. It's still around today, isn't it? Yeah, CRP is still... And they did not actually call it CRP yet at this time. There's now we do. Well, there's tons of CRP. There's probably... I would guess there's 20,000 acres of CRP within 50 miles of Depot. Is, is CRP still meant to help crop prices, or is it other It's still very much so meant to help crop prices. Um, but also conserve for wildlife, too. It, put it this way, if, everyone did, if every piece of ground was in CRP, though, we wouldn't have very much wildlife, because they wouldn't have anything to eat. Okay, Roosevelt and Relief, 1933. Harry Hopkins placed in charge of the RFC, which is the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, to direct aid Kaiser, to the unemployed. It's at nine and a half. Okay. 